Spirit Thomas Thompson, are you there? If you're there, give me a sign. What's up, Pro Guides fam? Name a better combination than video games and horror. Even as far back as the NES, these games found a way to get under our skin. In recent years, there's been a lot of lackluster horror games, but is there still new potential in the genre? Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. What's up, Pro Guides fam? I'm Steph Woodburn, and today we're gonna to be looking at another game climbing the chart. Phasmophobia came out of nowhere. It's only been out for about a month and is still so new the official account isn't verified on Twitter. It's the work of a UK-based indie studio called Kinetic Games, but this is misleading. It's really the work of a single developer who goes by the username DNighter, which is why it's really impressive the updates are coming as fast as they are. Phasmophobia currently has over 41,000 reviews on Steam and 96% of those reviews are positive, meaning Phasmophobia is one of the highest rated games on the entire Steam store. It's ranked above even the original Half-Life. At any time, it sits as one of the top 10 most played games on the platform, and at its peak, has around 90,000 active players. The stats show it's only growing, and for a game still in early access, there is so much potential for the game to go even further. He just closed the door! He just closed the door! What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So, what is Phasmophobia? It's a first-person, four-player, co-op, psychological horror game. Essentially, you're given one main objective. Work out what type of ghost is currently haunting your location. The game takes place across several different maps, including farms, a school, and even an abandoned asylum. There's currently 12 different types of ghosts in the name to detect, and each has their own unique behavior. This could be anything from how dangerous it is to how much it likes to possess objects. The ghosts are personalized a lot more than this, though. Every time you load into a map, several new aspects of the ghosts are generated including their gender, name, how long they've been dead, and even more. To determine the ghost type, you bring in different equipment from your van left outside the haunted building. As you record more data about the ghost, eventually you gather enough information to make a guess about what type of ghost it is. Phasmophobia also randomizes three additional tasks to complete as a bonus as well. These could be taking a picture of the ghost, cleaning the area, finding a room below a certain temperature, and it goes on. Your reward for completing each task is money, so you can buy better equipment for future ghost hunting. The catch? If you die, you lose any equipment you took with you, permanently. Multiplayer is where the game really begins to shine, though. It uses one simple idea to transform an element of games we all take for granted nowadays. All communication with other players has to be done through the game not another program like Discord or through an Xbox Live party. Robert, I'm, gonna, I'm never leaving. F you, Robert, I'm never Open leaving. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bother you. Open You'll door, never Robert. rest in peace. This may seem ridiculous, but the game exploits the single rule as much as it can. Voice chat in the game is proximity-based. You can only hear the people around you, but to talk to players in other areas of the map, you have to use a walkie-talkie. Even in small maps, like houses, you can't avoid this, which is a shame since the ghost not only hears everything you say, but can understand you too. If you call out its name, it could get really angry. If you tell the other players you're scared, it might decide to target you specifically. This one feature transforms the game from being occasionally scary to downright terrifying. It's mainly because this absorbs you into the game far more effectively than anything else. Just being able to talk to the ghost means it's in some way become alive and players even have conversations with it. Hello? What, adult? Ghost? Adult ghost? Are you an adult ghost or a child ghost? In particular, Phasmophobia is reaching so many people because it's a brand new way of thinking about horror in games. One of the most common ways that multiplayer games usually implement horror is to tend them towards the more asymmetric style. There's someone in power and you're trying to avoid them. This is exactly the logic that games like Dead by Daylight, the Friday the 13th game, and even Resident Evil's multiplayer modes use. Normally, these hunters have to be physical players though, as the AI required for this sort of system just isn't developed yet. This changes the dynamic quite drastically though. As the all-powerful character, there isn't really any fear since the only threat is losing. And as the weaker characters, it becomes a game of strategy, not horror. That person's at it. It's a game for everybody else. That's why Phasmophobia's implementation of asymmetry works so well. Rather than being competitive, the game is co-op. In fact, its AI isn't exactly groundbreaking technology. It's all been seen before, 
but it's never been implemented so successfully and smartly in a horror game. The all-powerful hunter in Phasmophobia is a computer, always controlling the ghosts. Humans will always have flaws, reaction time, and skill to take into account. An AI is ruthless. It has only one job, will do anything to achieve it, and has less room for error than you. And that's far more frightening. In some respects, the medium of video games is suited to horror far better than any other. Movies are very specifically engineered to allow you to see the world through someone else's eyes. They're passive in that they control the pacing, the atmosphere, and what's on screen at all times. Games, however, are active. Rather than giving you characters to relate to, you become the character you're playing as, and every decision your character makes is because of you. If you want the horror to eventually end, your input is necessary. On top of this, movies and other traditional forms of horror are usually held to standards of a narrative. In other words, you need characters and a story to lead you through these kinds of mediums. Otherwise, they just become a collection of unrelated images and ideas. Phasmophobia exploits both of these aspects unique to video games so well that it seems inevitable we'll see other games try to copy this. Instead of using a more traditional health system, Phasmophobia gives you a single hit point. If the ghost touches you, you're dead. But Phasmophobia gives you a line of defense, the sanity meter. As it decreases, more and more things start going wrong. More and more paranormal events start happening around you until eventually the ghost decides to kill you. It decreases whenever you as a player are alone, see proof of the ghost's existence or are in dark areas, which is 99% of the game. Its implementation is incredibly smart, as this means players are required to make a decision about their sanity every few seconds, adding to their stress. It also controls the pacing of the game, encouraging players to move faster and make mistakes. But the sanity meter also has a direct connection to the player, as it represents their own experience. To phrase it differently, as the controllable character's fear rises, so does the player's. Phasmophobia chooses to alter the rules of how the player experiences the world. There's a purposeful slow walk speed, it takes time to use a journal to record information, and you can only carry so many items, including the flashlight. You can't be aware of your surroundings if you're micromanaging all these factors at the same time. Other games, like Five Nights at Freddy's, capitalize on this exact fear, but in Phasmophobia, you're the one agitating the ghost. It's your own curiosity pushing you forward. If you wanted, you could just leave the map as soon as you load in. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Ah si c'est bon, c'est bon C'est bon Yes Usually most games experiment with this more free-form narrative style as part of a larger story. Silent Hill and Resident Evil contain periods of the game where you're just following a single character and with no dialogue. This then builds into a larger cinematic reveal that explains everything you've done so far. And there's nothing wrong with this. They're both fantastic and influential games. But Phasmophobia doesn't even try to attempt this and is far better for it. In Phasmophobia, there is no lore, there is no grand narrative, and definitely no plot trying to justify your actions. The only information you receive is about the ghost, and it's usually about who they were before they died. In more story-focused horror games, the player relates to an avatar that represents them, like Leon or Jill from Resident Evil. In Phasmophobia, the avatar and the player are essentially the same. The lack of story means the player can more easily slip into the role of the ghost hunter and come up with any personal justification for their actions, especially since the player can also control the dialogue of the game thanks to its incredible voice system. You can engage with the ghost in any way you want, and not just as some pre-established character would do in a cutscene. I locked her in the basement, I think. <laughs> in more story-focused games, this would be a problem, as you can't build up to a more satisfying payoff. However, Phasmophobia openly admits it needs to be replayed several times because of its permadeath and randomization. This lets it draw out far more realistic and emotional reactions to types of fear, such as isolation. Those few moments where you walkie-talkie to the other players in your game, and all you hear back is silence, is one of the most terrifying experiences you can have in-game. In that moment, you become aware the game isn't scripted, that nobody handcrafted the scenario for you to feel this way, and for the first time, you are genuinely alone. In general, horror games are usually critically received well, but tend to sell far less copies than their competitors. But do you know where they succeed the most? On streaming and on YouTube. PewDiePie basically built his entire career off games like Amnesia and Slenderman, 
And over on Twitch, Phasmophobia has already had over 39 million hours watched since its launch. Many people just prefer to engage with horror through these kinds of formats, and it's understandable why. The presence of the streamer, as well as just being a video on YouTube, is a subtle psychological reminder that the events of the game are fiction. You can never be as deeply terrified because, on some level, you're aware the fear isn't real. That's not to say Phasmophobia players are incredibly brave either. What's that? Oh, oh! These fears scare everybody. It's a normal human thing to be afraid of the dark. It's the unknown. And if anyone pretends like they're not, even on some level, they're lying. This is the same reason why Minecraft is scary at night. You just don't know what's out there. What's interesting is the way players try to confront this fear in Phasmophobia. With a constantly draining sanity meter and no clear way to ever be safe, Players are scared the entire time. And there's one common technique that most players have used at any point, whether it's by themselves, on a stream, or in a video. Humor. Oh, oh sh it's coming, it's coming, it's coming! Where is he, where is he? Oh, wait, I fell off the map. What? Oh! Wait, what? <laughs> this sort of comedy is the way most people try to break the tension inside the game. It projects a sort of composure and stability, even when it isn't the case. The biggest difference is that when people laugh genuinely, it has the effect of relaxing them. But from watching streams or phasmophobia, it seems players are more tense than ever after making these jokes. Nancy Robinson, can you hear us? I think you've got to be alone, though. Ah! Ah! No, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead! We're dead, oh, we're dead. No, no. What happened, what happened? No, we're, we're in hunt mode. She's in hunt mode. Uh, uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put I shouldn't have thing. said her name. I'm sorry, Nancy Robinson. I'm sorry, Nancy Robinson. Phasmophobia's greatest strength is that it knows the unknown will always be far scarier than anything it could ever show you. In fact, death by itself isn't even punishing. The equipment you lose isn't that expensive, and you can earn it back quickly. Phasmophobia doesn't actually prevent you from taking risks. It just adds a lot more weight to every decision you make. And there sure are a lot of them. But is the randomization pushing the game too far in a different direction? Plus, players still have nothing to do once they die, but trying to fix this might remove the fear of death in the first place. What would you like to see Dean Eider add to Phasmophobia next? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Steph Woodburn, and we'll see you next time.